Hi, I'm George Pearson. In this Photoshop Elements video, I'll be showing you how to make a special layer mask that allows you to isolate the midtones of a value so you can then use that to control the image. Let me just show you that here. Here's the original image, and here I have the midtones brightened up using a levels control. So before and after, right there. And it's all done with a special layer mask. Now, if you enjoy this video, make sure you click that like button and, of course, share with your friends. Also, subscribe so you don't miss any videos in the future. And if you want to learn all about how to use Photoshop Elements, take a look at my complete training, and you'll find links for that up there in the upper right-hand corner. All right, let's get to it. I have this really neat picture here of a lightning strike on New York City. And the lightning is real nice. There's some light, you know, real bright lights in here and some nice lights right here in the buildings. There's some nice dark tones up here in some of the buildings and down below. But the mid-tones could use a little bit of punch to them. Let me show you how you can do that using a levels adjustment and a specialized layer mask for the levels adjustment. There are other ways, of course, of doing this. This is just one technique, but it's an interesting one. I thought I'd show you how this is done. First, let me just show you the theory behind this. Let's just bring in a new layer here, layer adjustment layer and levels right there. I'll just clip this to that layer. And there's our adjustment layer. Now, if I make an adjustment in here on my midtones, I can really adjust the midtone values. Notice that if I adjust this to brighten my midtones up, I lose a lot of other stuff in there. The, the sky gets washed out, I lose the clouds up there, the water gets washed out. If I pull it down so it's darker, then I begin to lose detail in those dark areas. I can go darker on that, or I can try to lighten it up here, but that really kind of washes things out again. So even though I can do a little bit of adjustment here to increase my contrast, it still adjusts the whole picture. But I want to really limit that adjustment to just the mid-tones in the picture. Okay, now when I put an adjustment layer on here, notice that it automatically gives me a layer mask over here on the right-hand side. And that's the real trick here. On a layer mask, white shows and black hides. Let me just demonstrate that. I'm going to take a little shape here. Just grab our standard shapes and I'll just grab an ellipse like that. And if you hold the Alt key down and click on your layer, you can actually look at just the layer mask. Right there, just click on the Alt key, right on the layer mask itself, and it shows you just the layer mask. So I'm going to fill this with black first. That inverts the layer mask. Let's now change our colors here to white, back to our shape, and then we make sure our color right here is white. There we go. Come down to our settings center, have this set for our from center, and let's set this to unconstrained. I'll come right into the, the center here of the picture. I'll just pull that out like that. What that does is it gives me a white area in here and then black on the outside. So I have a white and a black setting in here for my layer mask. Now if I click back onto the image side of that, you can see right there, there is that layer mask. If I now double click on my adjustment layer and run my controls, you can see how the adjustment is only happening inside that part that is white. So black is hiding the adjustment, and white is showing the adjustment. If I had any gray values in here, it would show me just a little bit of the adjustment. The darker the gray, the less it would show. The lighter the gray, the more it would show on that adjustment. So you can use the layer mask to control how much or where the adjustment is being applied to. And that's the whole idea here. OK, now that you know the basic idea, let's go ahead and have some fun with this. I'm going to take this and just delete that layer. There we are. We're back to our regular background layer right here. Make a copy of this layer, just drag it up to the New Layer button, let go, so I have a copy of that. Now take this new layer here and convert this to black and white. Go up to Enhance, come down to Convert to Black and White, right there. And in here, you have several different options on making the conversion. I found for this trick the Vivid Landscapes works out pretty well. So I'll use that one and choose OK. So it's now black and white. Let's now take this layer and duplicate that layer. So we have two black and white layers. On the top one, we're going to make this a negative. And you do that by going up to the Filter menu, coming down to Adjustments, and Invert. So that's now a negative. So we have a positive black and white and a negative black and white. The reason I did that is that 
black hides and white shows. So on this one, the if I made just use this for my controls, I would have controls showing in my midtones and into the white areas. And I wouldn't have any control showing over here on the dark stuff. So this takes care of the dark stuff. That's just fine. But I don't want to have anything happening on my white areas either. On this top one, on the negative, it's not going to have anything happening in where it's black here, which is the brightest parts of the picture. The midtones will have some adjustments happening, and the darkest parts will also be having a lot happening right there. So what I need is I need the blacks from this and the blacks from this combined to give me a new layer that just has the midtones showing. So we can do that by taking our white negative layer here and merging this into our black positive layer down there. So it's our white negative and black positive. Click on our blend mode, come down to darken, and you can see what's happened. Now the dark areas are dark, that's what I want. The white areas are also dark. And then our midtone values have different varying shades of gray. So we now have managed to do that. We have a black and white image where it's dark at the ends, dark at the black and the white, and it has kind of a you know midtone values in the midtone part of the picture. I now need to take this and put this onto one layer. To do that, let's hide the background layer. And then using a special keyboard shortcut, Control, Shift, Alt, and E. And it twice, I'm just get rid of that one. There we go, that combines these two layers onto a new layer. Now hide those two layers, we're done with that. We're on this layer, hold the control key down and click on the thumbnail of our black and white specialty layer here. That selects the whole layer. Go up to edit and copy. You can then just deselect that. We can now hide that layer. Come down to the background. Here's our original background image right there. Let's put a, an adjustment layer above this. So go up here to Layer, come down to New Adjustment Layer and Levels. I'll just click that previous layer to create Clipping Mask checkbox right there. Choose OK. Notice how this gives me a lot of imagery in here and a lot of values clear down to the dark end, clear to the light end, and then a lot of stuff in the midtone. It's mostly a midtone picture. That's fine. Close that. You can see here is our layer mask right there. Hold the Alt key down, click on the layer mask. That opens the layer mask up. Now, let's paste what we just copied in. Edit, paste. That pastes that specialty layer onto the layer mask. So now, this is going to allow in adjustments in varying amounts on all the gray areas. It's going to block off the stuff in the dark and block off the adjustments in the light. So it's going to be limiting our adjustments to just the mid values of the image. Click back on the control side and here's our image. Now notice we have little dancing or little marching ants in there. We can just hide that, select, deselect, there we are. Double click on the adjustment side right there. And now I can adjust the midtone values in here without affecting the light or the dark parts of the image. So I have now gained that control over the midtone values and let me to get these things exactly the way I want. I can still play with the dark side, but you see it's darkening down the midtone values, not the light or the dark part. See right here, here's some dark right there, some dark up there. If I move this back and forth, those really aren't changing that much. So it's really limiting the dark controls to the midtone values and the light controls again to the midtone values. Again, if you watch the center part of the lightning strike, as I move this in, the center part stays the same. I'm increasing the glow around that lightning strike because that's in the midtone values, but the lightning strike itself isn't getting overexposed. So it gives me a lot of control in here. Now I'm limiting my controls right to those midtone values. I just play around a little bit more here. A little more contrast. You pull these in, you're going to get more contrast. Again, we're increasing contrast in the midtone values only this way, and no place else in the image. And that looks pretty good just like that. So for this picture, I'm using 27 on the black, 0.86 on my midtones, and 166 for the whites. Let's now see how that looks.
I'll just hide and show. There's the original, and here's our mid-tone values enhanced. So original and enhanced. There we go. Let's just float this like that so you can get a little larger image in here and open that. You can see that a bit better. There's the whole picture. So here's before and there's after. So I've really enhanced the mid values of the image without touching my darkest values or the lightest values. And that's how you do that. That's how you make that layer mask. And you can control this even more. You can adjust the contrast of this to control how much this is changing the exposure in here. Do that by holding down the Alt key, click on the layer mask. We now enter the layer mask again and at this point you can use your enhanced controls, adjust lighting, brightness contrast, and I can increase the contrast on this, increase the brightness if I want to, This will make the controls even more stark. So I'm I'm darkening down the darks and I'm I'm darkening down the lightest areas and kind of increase or, or squishing everything towards the middle values on this. Choose OK. Go back here to the image side or to the control side of that. And again, there we go. There is the image without any control, and here is the image with that control using this specialty layer mask to limit the controls to just the mid-tone values. Let's run through that real fast. Again, so you can understand this is a little bit tricky. So first thing we do is we copy the background layer, make a black and white out of it. That's right there. There's our black and white. Copy that and invert that layer which is right there. So you have a positive and a negative. Blend the negative into the positive using the darken mode. That just adds the black parts of this into this and leaves the light parts alone. Then use that Control Alt Shift E keyboard shortcut to merge that into a new layer right here. Make a copy of that. And that's just the Control and click on that thumbnail and edit copy. So it copies that image right there. Deselect. And then we come down here to our, our levels control with the layer mask right here. Alt and click on the thumbnail for the layer mask. You can then paste that image inside of the layer mask, giving you a very nicely controlled layer mask for that adjustment. And again, you can use your contrast and brightness to control the values in here. Click back on the adjustment side of that layer, and you're back to your regular image. So there it is. That's how to really punch up a, a good picture, make it even more exciting, by controlling all of your adjustments to just the mid-tone values of your image. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the Like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.